Hi. So in hindsight, I realize this video is kind of dumb. Please enjoy. Horror is like an egg. Or maybe more like preparing an egg. Depending on how you use it, you might not even realize it's there unless you know what the dish is like without it. Eggs are used to make all kinds of dishes, and we often enjoy them all on their own. Today, I'm going to categorize horror based on how I feel they compare to types of food that we use eggs with. I was hungry when I wrote this, so we're just going to roll with it. This is all pretty subjective, both your view on horror and eggs, so if you disagree with anything that I categorized here, I'd be happy to talk about it more. Also, this isn't going to be comprehensive in any way, so help me fill in what else I could have added in the comments. I should mention that I will go into spoilers for everything that I'm going to talk about. So if you don't want to see that, I'll have a section in the description below this video on all the different movies and games I'm going to talk about, so that you'll know what you might want to skip. Let's talk about pastries. I'm thinking about cookies and cake in one sense here, where something isn't meant to be horror but feels like it is, or uses elements of horror without actually being considered horror. On the other hand, quiche is a pastry which, depending on how it's prepared, the eggs can be very prominent. So what belongs here? For cake and cookies, I would say some parts of the Brave Little Toaster, The Wizard of Oz, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, or that puppet scene from The Sound of Music. These are not considered horror, but they have scenes that can either be perceived that way by some viewers, or have scenes that are way scarier than they had any right to be. The horror is baked into the recipe, but they are not in the horror genre. However, on another level of pastry, we can talk about quiche. It can be sweet, it can be savory, it can be eggy, but not always. Quiche is in a weird place, which is what makes it perfect for this category. Here I'm thinking of things like Shutter Island, World War Z, and maybe Resident Evil 5 and 6 specifically. For Shutter Island, it's considered a thriller, so I would call that a sweet custard quiche. It never becomes truly horrific, but it has a lot of moments that threaten to be. World War Z and Resident Evil 5 and 6 are action horror with an emphasis on action, so I might call these a savory quiche where you can definitely taste the egg, but the egg is so homogenized with the other ingredients that you don't really get to taste the pure eggy horror by itself. And I don't think that makes it a bad thing, to be clear. I like World War Z, Resident Evil 5, and 6, believe it or not, but for different reasons and not for their horror content exactly. I mean, Resident Evil 6 is probably the most confusing quiche I've ever had, but I had a good time eating it. Also, it feels weird to put Resident Evil and the Brave Little Toaster in the same category as pastries, but I guess that's what happens when you try to use eggs as a metric. It's a very American way of doing it. Next we have ramen, eggs benedict, fried rice, stuff like that. Very different foods, but what they all have in common is a very distinct egg as one element of the dish. Fried rice kind of mixes with the egg in, but you still can pick out the individual pieces. It hasn't been totally homogenized with the other ingredients. And that's what I'm trying to say about this kind of horror. There are parts or aspects where the horror is really prominent, but there's a lot more going on than just the horror. In this category, I would put the other Resident Evil games. There's more that can fit in this category, but I just felt that the RE games overall fit here really well. Every bite of horror you take, you're getting a bit of everything else with it, which isn't bad, I like fried rice, but I also have a grenade launcher. So I'm having more fun than I am getting creeped out. Just like the fried rice. The egg is all over it, but you're getting a lot of peas and carrots too. And rice. I only talked about Resident Evil games in this section, but I'm sure there's a lot more that can go here. Action isn't the only genre that you can attach to horror. Imagine the other ingredients in a ramen bowl as different genres. I would consider a romance horror or a comedy horror to be in the same category. So tell me if you have any other good recommendations for this category. I've just been playing a lot of Resident Evil games lately, so it's been on my mind. In the next category, we're getting into all of the ways you can prepare eggs by themselves, or where the other ingredients are meant to complement the egg and not the other way around. We're talking scrambled, boiled, fried, with nothing more than a little bit of salt and pepper, or maybe even some I'll include omelets here as well, since what you're eating primarily are the eggs. In this category, the atmosphere oozes horror, and egg is the main dish. When cooked just right, it's perfect. And that's the key. 
Cooking a fried egg takes some care and finesse. The pan can't be too hot or cold, you have to have the right amount of butter, and you have to know when to let off the heat. The main point of this category is not just that the dish contains egg, but the care you have to take to make it just right. So what goes in this category? Well, I would say Silent Hill. I'm not gonna say it's all because of Silent Hill 2 specifically, but that's the one I'm most familiar with, and I think most people would agree that's where the franchise peaked. I'm categorizing this here largely, though, through rose-colored glasses, since I haven't played it in over a decade, but in a nutshell, Silent Hill is a town which calls individuals in various ways, traps them in an alternate dimension, and torments them with manifestations of their guilt and past trauma, and forces them to either succumb to that guilt and trauma, or overcome them. Like a fried egg, Silent Hill is a simple, horrific concept cooked exactly right. The designs, the music, the environments, it all has such focus, it's hard to imagine it being done any better. I wrote this before playing the remake, so we'll see how that turns out. I do have more in this category that I think hits the mark pretty well. One movie that I feel captures the same kind of horror that Silent Hill does is The Babadook. I watched this movie recently, and I was surprised at how well it captured the grief of losing a loved one. The whole movie, is about a manifestation of grief and how it can consume your life if you don't learn to deal with it. It's incredibly unsettling, and it was the first time I really felt like something came close to the same kind of horror as Silent Hill. Next, I think The Thing deserves to be in this category. I would call The Thing a cheese and sausage omelet. <laughs> I'm stretching a bit here, but if you made it this far, I think you're tracking with me at this point. There's a lot more that you could put into this category, so let me know what else you think fits here. The last category is raw eggs. Horror, by definition, is transgressive by nature. It delves into topics that are taboo and unspeakable. In every other category, we're able to open up these topics in a safe way and see what we can learn from them. Horror leads us to think about our mortality or how we would manage tragedy. Zombie apocalypse scenarios are fun to fantasize about, but it wouldn't be fun to actually live through. The raw egg category is for content that depicts actual horror. I'm not going to show you any footage of this, because for one, YouTube is a sensitive <laughs> and I didn't want to look any of it up anyway. But I'll briefly list some of the things I'm talking about here. We're talking about and the it's like you know, you know, getting all like, like, oh, like, you know, stuff like that. If you watch these kind of things on the regular, stop it. I think some of us have seen some of these things over the years and have had the proper reaction of disgust, sadness, and it makes us reflect a little bit. It's not meant to be enjoyed, but when we see this kind of things in small doses, hopefully, it should lead us to want to be better and more careful or think about our mortality more. It reminds us that not all is right in the world and it gives us pause on what we can do about it. I think that the best kind of horror can trigger a similar reaction to this, but without the real world consequences. To me, this is what makes horror so valuable as a genre. So, do you think I made any good points? Am I overlooking anything? What's your favorite way to eat an egg? Tell it all to me in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, and if you liked the video, go ahead and give it a like. That helps quite a bit. And if you're new here, you could subscribe. You can see more of this type of video. There's more on the channel, too. If you wanted to go look at those, there's similar videos to this one, and uh, there's more on the way. So go check those out, and I'll see you next time. Bye.